Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of things from a company called Aero Go Go. And to confuse matters, they've got a couple of campaigns up on Indiegogo. So you've got a lot of Go-Go's there. I'll put the link to their campaigns in the video description. You might want to check them out, you might want to support them, you might want to buy one of these upcoming products. Now the selling points of these particular things are the fact that you just press a button and they inflate. And when there was a company called Micro Novelty, who seems to be handling the marketing for Aero Go Go, got in touch with me, I was pretty intrigued as to the possible simplicity of these things. So they've just arrived. I haven't even taken them out of the plastic yet. But apparently this one is a one-touch inflatable tent called a Giga. Or Giga. And I'm presuming that that is the rainproof cover for it, maybe. So that is the tent. And the second thing is a two-seater sofa. Which, again, apparently is just a one-touch procedure to blow it up. This thing seems really heavy. Duty is pretty heavy as well. I'll put the specs for it in the video description. At a guess... I'd say that was maybe five kilos. That's pretty heavy. Even the bag it's in is a good quality bag as well. Okay, so we've got it neatly folded up and I can almost guarantee that the chances of me getting it folded up like that again are practically zero. A couple of straps on there. I hope what's this? <laughs> We've got a little patch there just in case it does get a puncture, which it's not going to on my grass because that, you, I mean, you can wander around on that and bare feet, no problem. And there's also a Type C charging cable. And the charging cable is for the built in pump. God, this is a heavy thing. Okay, so there we've got. Yeah, the plug, which looks like it can be inflated manually from an ordinary pump. That also allows you to drain the air out, presumably. And then here, we've got the air pump in here somewhere. I can feel something in here. It must be the air pump. And also the battery. I think it's a 2000 milliamp battery, which, oh God, will it allow you to inflate this 30 times or less I cannot remember god I'll put all the I'll put uh, I'll put everything in the video description my memory is shot and there we've got the charger which is a type C so it, it'll charge pretty quick I think it's five hours although I could be wrong and then if we take that little rubber seal out there that looks like the intake for an air pump and I'm presuming that little button there is the switch to turn it on Let's see. Yep, that's definitely sucking air in there. And I better roll this out before it starts to inflate. Okay, we're about 30 seconds into the procedure and I can see that it's inflating pretty quickly. I'll tell you what I'll do. Set that up there. Hopefully pointing towards it and then I'll do a time lapse of it inflating, just to save you hanging around for a few minutes. Right, I think that was about, mm, don't know, maybe four minutes, four and a half minutes, which from absolute flat is pretty impressive. 
and there's no sort of alarm that tells you when it's fully inflated, but it feels about right. Yeah, that's any amount, definitely. And there is a warning on the back of there, near the air pump, that tells you not to use the air pump continuously for more than five minutes. <laughs> That's quite impressive. I didn't quite know what to expect. But that's really handy. It folds down very small. If we have visitors or we're having a barbecue or something and someone just fancies something just to lounge about on on the grass, that is a great option. Now, that is where it can be pumped up manually and also where the air comes out, presumably, if I take this out. Yep, I can hear it coming out there. I'll tuck that back away. <laughs> and what have we got in here? Ah, good. That is like the internal skin, like a bladder that blows up. And then this cover covers that. So this cover, by the looks of it, it'll be easy to wipe down. Possibly to strip off completely and wash, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know, but there seems to be an awful lot of zips going there. Again, I couldn't see anything about being able to strip that off on the website, but it looks like you can. If you ever wanted to totally clean this thing, although I would imagine it would wipe or wash, or you could even use a soft power wash on this sort of material. Yeah, it's pretty robust. Stitching on it looks okay as well. It all seems neat enough. The zip operates fine. I've got that just to cover the valve. And then at the bottom here, this is where the warning is. Do not use more than five minutes continuously. That is relating to the air pump and it'll be just because it will get hot and possibly burn out through excessive use. That is where the Oops. that's where the air was going in <laughs> so that's the air intake obviously you wouldn't want to switch this thing on without taking that plug out because then it wouldn't be able to suck air in you need to take that out for it to suck air in and there's your charging point and the good thing is you've got another cap which then screws over the top which keeps that in and stops it from popping out so you're not going to get any leaks from this Right, then a quick 360 view, so you can see what it's like, and then I think we'll put this fella away and get that tent out and see what's going on with that. That's pretty cool. My wife and kids are going to absolutely love that. So big thanks to Micro Novelty and AeroGoGo for sending me that to show you guys. Yeah, with both those plugs pulled out, that's deflating pretty quick. I'll just leave it to deflate, roll it up, and then surprise my wife with it the next time we're out in the garden on a sunny day. Right, I'm presuming it's exactly the same procedure for the tent, because it is described as one touch. Oh, what's that in there? There's something in there. Something else in there. Eggs, yes. Just a little thing. Oh, that must be the rain cover. Ah, I don't know what the hell anything is. Let's just get this thing blown up and see what happens. Where are we? Let's see, yes. Okay, this feels like the pump, and the pump feels a lot bigger in this one. It feels almost like a like a half a litre drinking bottle or something. Yeah, and we've got the same sort of thing on there. We've got a little charging input, which is, again, type C. And we've got an on-off button, which I shall press once I've spread this out. Now, with that one, it's a lot quieter. And I can't actually see where it's pulling air in from. But it's definitely pulling air in. Apparently, this one takes about three minutes to inflate. 
So again, I think I'll just put it in a convenient place for the camera, do a time lapse and then we'll see roughly how long it takes. Oh, you can just about see it there. There's like a, a plastic pin comes up in the middle and then you've got holes around the outside of that. This material feels excellent. It all seems to be double stitched as well, around the zips and everything. Yeah. That's very well made. Now that was interesting. The phone rang whilst that was inflating and the pump switched itself off. I'm kind of presuming that it would have done that on the sofa that we've just taken a look at as well. So I'm going to blow that one up again to test it and I'll let you know once we've taken a look at this tent. So as you can see we've got like a spine that goes over that way and we've got one that goes over that way. Normally those would just be like fiberglass poles or something that you threaded through to give you support for the structure. And I must admit, I was really doubting whether an inflatable tent would be strong enough or even, you know, upright. But that is most definitely upright. It looks like you can access it from both sides as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Midgy net there, and yeah, you can. You can definitely get in there. Yeah, so you can get in and out of this side. And then on the other side, presumably we've got the same. Yes, we have. Okay, let's open this side up. Yeah. Good. I think I'll get it pegged down at the corners, just to straighten everything up. Now, this is the moment when I realise I could probably have done with a few instructions. And I'm positive that instructions will come with these once the Indiegogo project finishes and they get them into production. But with what came here, there's no instructions. However, I can work it out. We've got some little guy lines here, which obviously go on the bottom half of the legs. And then we've got some longer ones, which I think go on the top part of the legs to create the solid structure. We shall see. That looks all right. And I'm quite amazed at just how sturdy it is for that being filled with air. Yeah, we're getting there, man. We're getting there. Because I've had to work out where everything goes, it has taken me quite a while to erect this tent. Which is really embarrassing because I'm supposed to be some sort of off-grid, hardcore survivalist prepper. <laughs> and I'm sure you could have dragged anybody off the street and they would have done a better job than me. There'd be a few pegs short. I don't know whether there just wasn't enough scent or whether I've misplaced some somewhere, which is always a possibility. So I've just had to make do. I've got the guy lines out the front, certainly in the right place. The ones at the back are attached to the lower pegs and is it's okay, but it isn't ideal. Find a place for this smaller sheet due to the X in the middle, I'm presuming, goes over the top to cover the air vents. I've put those long guy lines on there. They do appear to be in the right position now. One on that side as well. So that is the front, looking pretty presentable. On the back, because I was a couple of pegs short, could do with another peg in here and again one on the other side just to level it up 
that doesn't look right to me. I may as well show you underneath here. This is this little final cover that goes over the top. And hopefully you can see under there, there's a little air vent. Oh, I must have got it laid out pretty well because that's quite flat in there. Good. Here you can see we've got the mosquito proof breathing gap here and also here. There's a little hook for hanging a light or anything else. As I mentioned at the start we've got access at the back and also at the front. I'm not entirely sure why you would need it from both sides unless you wanted to open up both sides of course and just have something almost like a tunnel that the kids could play in maybe want to shut it up for the night we can just zip up the outer part first and then zip up the inner part keep those pesky midges out not a giant by any means but there's just enough room in here for me to lie down without touching the far end and without touching this end. In fact, if I do it that way, you might be able to see better. Yep, but it is tight. You know, you could possibly get two adults in here, but as far as the length goes, for actually lying down, it would be a bit of a stretch if you were tall. Although the, so this is just big enough for somebody of my height, which is approximately five foot nine, five foot ten. I'm not super tall. Anybody taller than that would have their feet rubbing against that end or the head rubbing against this end. Unless, of course, you slept diagonally and then one person could sleep in here very comfortably. I would kind of pitch this at people who were shorter than me. Or, for kids, a couple of rolly mats and sleeping bags down, it's going to be comfortable enough. See how it does overnight, and I'll get back to you in the morning. Okay, quick update on the peg situation. I had loads of pegs lying around the place because I've got numerous tents and plenty of spare pegs. So now the guy lines are in the correct place on the back. Okay, so... It absolutely lashed down last night and the tent didn't let any water in which is surprising because it was coming down hard and heavy <laughs> it was also pretty windy as well can see a little bit of water up a height there and uh, I'm just looking through it's just on the outside so that's okay in order to get into a decent sized sleeping bag I'm sleeping diagonally, which is okay, but it doesn't really leave room for anybody else. And another thing that kind of caught my attention was that there's no real outer storage part to this tent. Generally, you'd have the outer sheet and it would extend over the inner sheet, which would give you a space to put like a backpack, your shoes, or, you know, bits of gear. But this doesn't really have that. And another area of concern as well is because it rained so much last night uh, the outside of the tent was wet and when I opened the door to get out the sheet just flapped about and it dropped a bit of water in. I suppose it would do that with anything of this design. So really, you know, as far as functioning as a tent goes it held up well enough. Um, Nothing's come through the floor because obviously there's no like pre-prepared ground sheet. It's just got the one that's sewn into the tent. So all in all, 
here, it managed to stay dry. I'll take you out now and show you. Well, it stopped raining now, but hopefully you can see how wet it is outside. You get some appreciation of how wet it was. I forgot to mention the most important thing, which is why I left it up overnight. And that was to check whether the inflatable spine of this thing had held up. And it has. It doesn't look like it's lost any air. Still totally structurally sound. I'm still not sold on the idea of having an inflatable spine as opposed to a few fiberglass poles which are much lighter and you know really just as easy to, to do and you haven't got the, the problem of a, an air pump ever breaking down but some people might see they might see the benefit in that. This is a big sleeping bag it's like a, a carp fishing sort of a bag that you'd strap onto a like a, a folding bed sort of thing, so it's really thick. You don't really need a ground sheet with it either. Well, I don't, especially seeing as I'm used to just sleeping on the floor anyway. Um, you can see I've had to put it in diagonally, uh, stored in clothes and so on over in the far end there, just to keep them dry, and they did stay dry. You know, you can see there's, there's no water in here, so it did hold up. I'll go back in the house, get a cup of inspiration, and I'll be back with you with my final thoughts. Yeah, it's still structurally sound. Didn't let the water in, which is the main thing. So all it's left to do now is just blow up the settee again and see if the air pump automatically switches itself off. I'm thinking not, because it does give the warning on the back about running it for more than five minutes, but we'll see. I let that run just over five minutes and it didn't turn itself off. So, again, the instructions didn't arrive with these things. So I can only gather that the sofa air pump does not switch itself off automatically. The air pump that's in the tent does. That's what I found out today anyway. So really, I should give my final thoughts on both these. I'll start with the tent because that's the one that I'm still a little bit unsure of. Whilst it is, you know, nice and easy to erect, in fact it practically erects itself at the press of a button, everything else associated with it is just the same as putting up a normal tent. So I think if you just wanted something for the kids to play about in and sleep out in where you didn't have to put that extra sheet over the top or fart about with the little cap that goes on the top in good weather for example then that's fair enough if you were contemplating using that in normal conditions which in the north of England would generally be reasonably cold and possibly wet then I don't really see the benefit of that over a standard tent and it's certainly a lot more expensive you could buy an excellent um, standard tent well, for a lot less money than that costs. Now, as far as charging these things go, obviously you can charge it from the mains, just with a, a normal charging cable, like that cable. You can charge it directly from solar panel, if you're out and about, or you can use one of these, which is just like a battery storage thing. This one's actually got a solar panel on the front of it as well, which I really should have had facing the sun, but that's currently getting charged from this solar panel. You've got numerous ways of charging it, if you're out and about. A normal tent would be preferable over that. Unless you had kids and you just wanted something that you didn't have to have any thought as to how to set it up. You just press the button, it blew up, and then you just put it out in the garden. And, you know, as long as the weather wasn't bad, you wouldn't have to bother with the outer sheets and so on. Okay, so... Onto that. Um, I absolutely love that. I think it's really well made. It's easy to move about. It's solid. It's comfortable. It blows up in approximately three minutes. This is a material that is going to be hard wearing and easy to wipe down. I just think that's a real winner. Absolutely perfect for someone who's got limited storage space in the house 
and they just want to get something out into the garden that's comfortable and takes no setting up. That's absolutely excellent. And of course, you don't have to use it outside. You know, if you've got a house full of kids and they're all there, you're having a pizza party or something and they're watching the TV and there's not enough places to sit, instead of having some of them just sitting on the floor, you could get one, two, you could maybe just get three or four little kids on there, no problem at all. Certainly two, possibly three adults, no problem. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, that's classed as a two-seater, but, you know, one. Two. Three. It's going to be a little bit snug if you're adults. Certainly two would be way more comfortable, but there's ample space there. And it's a decent distance from the back to the front as well. So it's very comfortable. If you're out in the garden, you just wanted to crash out on something, that would do. So the tent, I don't know, you be the judge of that, you've seen what it's like. The sofa, 100% yes, although I do need to check the price on it.